It's Crystal, and today I'm going to show you how to make this little, um, probably a clutch, or a little bit big, big wallet. Um, the button goes through the center of the flower. That's how you undo it. And it does have a lining in it. And I did put some plastic canvas in between the bag and the lining to make it stiffer. Now you don't have to do that, but it makes it not be very floppy. Because if I didn't have that in there, it would be super floppy right now and just be hanging over. And again, that's something that you don't have to do. It's entirely up to you. But put a liner in it. And then... Like that. So, I it didn't take very long. It's got this the shell and post stitch. That's what type of stitch this is. It's pretty easy to do. Um, and you can always make your those bigger than this if you want or whatever, but it's a nine inch bag. And close to close to five inches wide. So whatever you think. But I think I think it turned out good. I like it. Um, well let's go ahead and get started on it. Okay, for this project I'm using a size I, it's a five and a half millimeter crochet hook and then I'm using a regular four ply yarn I'm using peaches and cream it's a hundred percent cotton but you can use whatever will work or you can use cotton acrylic wool whatever you like the best okay you want to start with a chain of 33 Okay, and then once you get your chain of 33, we need to do a double crochet in the sixth chain from the hook. And we don't count the one that's on our hook. So, one, two, three, four, five, six. Go into that sixth one and do a double crochet. So, we're going to yarn over and go into the stitch, the sixth stitch. Grab your yarn and draw up a loop. And you'll have three loops on your hook. You want to yarn over and go through the first two. And yarn over and go through the last two. Like that. Now we're going to go back into that same stitch and do another double crochet. So we're going to yarn over. Go back into that same one. Grab our yarn and draw up a loop. And then again we're going to have three loops. We want to yarn over and go through the first two loops. And there'll be two loops left. And we want to yarn over and go through the last two. Now we want to do a chain one. And then we want to go back into the same stitch and do two more double crochets. Just one second. My dog's going crazy. Sorry about that. The neighbor dog was running loose outside and my dog was being a being a weirdo, <laughs> barking at it. Okay, we did our first two double crochets, chain one, and now we're going to go back into that same spot and do two more. Two more doubles right into the same spot. And that's going to form like um, the shell stitch. So now we need to skip two chains, one, two, and then the next one, the third one, we'll do one double crochet in it. So yarn over and go into the stitch, draw up a loop, three loops on your hook, yarn over and go through the first two, and then the last one's remaining. So again, we're going to skip the next two stitches, skip, skip. And in the third one, we're going to do another of the shell stitches. So we're going to do two double crochets in it. So one, two in the same stitch. We're going to chain one. And then we're going to go back into the same stitch and do two more. Skip two, 
and into the, the third one, one double crochet. Skip two, and into the third one, and another shell. Two doubles, a chain one, and two more doubles, all into the same stitch. Skip the next two, and then double crochet into the next one. Just one double. Skip two, and then do a shell into the next one. Chain two, er, two double crochets, a chain one, and two more doubles. Skip the next two, and double crochet in the next, just one double. Skip two, and do a shell. Two doubles, chain one, and two more doubles. And then you want to skip two, and then you should have one spot left for one more double crochet. And that's what it's starting to look like so far. Okay, now what we want to do is do a chain three. And turn. This is chain three is counting as a, a double crochet. So now what we're going to do is we're going to be working in the chain one space right here. So we want to just do another shell in this space. So do two double crochets. chain one and then two double crochets just like that and now we're going to move over here to this double crochet and we're going to work a front post double crochet and it's 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 really easy it's just like a double and we're going to do it around the post so we're going to yarn over like we would do a double and just go right through the post like that. Yarn over. Just go right underneath it or right behind it. See? And just went. right through it. And then I'm just going to do a double crochet. Grab my yarn and then go through it like that. So I'm going to go through the first two and the last two. And then I'm just going to stretch over here to this space and do another shell. going to be two doubles, chain one, and two more doubles all in that same space, like that. Now we're going to go ahead and reach over here to this, this uh, post and do another 
front post double crochet. We're going to yarn over and just go right in between, just right under the post like that, and just do a double crochet. Just like that. Right over here to the next shell space right here and do another shell. Two doubles, chain one. Two doubles. And then we're going to come right here and do our front post double crochet. Just go right underneath the posts do a double crochet like that right here we're going to do another shell two doubles chain one and two more doubles Then we're going to come over here and do our front post and double around this post. If it's easier, you can fold it in half like that and just pull your post up. And we're just working right under the post, just like that, and doing a double crochet. And then right here in this last shell space, do another shell. Chain one, two more doubles, all in the same space. And then at the end here, we're just going to do a regular double crochet in the top of our chain space here. Just like that. So that's what it's starting to look like. Now we're going to need to do a chain three again and turn. Just go ahead right here into this shell space and do another shell. So two doubles, a chain one, and two doubles all in this first shell space. Then we're going to come over here to this one. Now this time we have to do a back post double crochet. Um, and this one right here. So we yarn over and we just turn our work and go through the back part like I just flip it kind of and I just go through it like this. Right underneath that post like that. And do the double. Just like that. And the reason why we do that is so when we flip it, the line's still going straight up. If we was to do another front post, this post would be on the back and it wouldn't look right. So we just move straight over here to this shell space again and do another shell. Two double crochets, chain one, two more doubles. Okay, move on over here to this space right here. We're going to do a back post double. So we're just going to yarn over, turn our work. And just go right underneath that post and do a double crochet. And then flip our work back. Move right to here the next shell space and do another shell. Two doubles, chain one, two more double. 
back over here to this post right here. Do a back post double crochet, yarn over. I always split my work. And then this go right under that post. And do a double crochet. And then flip my work back over. Go into this next shell space. Another shell. Chain one. Two more doubles in the same space. Okay, we're going to move to this one right here, back post double, yarn over, back post double crochet like that, move to this space, do another shell, two doubles, chain one, two more doubles, Okay, and then at the end here, one double crochet into the top of this chain space. And that finishes that round out. And this is what it's starting to look like. This, is, this stitch is called the sh uh, sh post and shell stitch, or shells and post stitch. So now what we want to do again, we're just going to be repeating these rows. So we're going to chain, do a chain three again and turn and again shell stitch right there, chain or two doubles, chain one, two more doubles. Okay, this time we have to do a front post double crochet. So our posts are on the front again. And the next round will be the back post, and then the front post, and then the back post. So do the front post double crochet, yarn over, and just go right under this post. Just like that. Do a double crochet. Okay, shell space, another shell. Two doubles, chain one, two more doubles, this post, front post double crochet, yarn over, just go right underneath the post, and double crochet. And then right here. We're going to do another shell in that space, two doubles, chain one, two more doubles, right here, front post double, yarn over and just go right underneath the post, just like that, and do a double. Next shell space, do another shell, two doubles, chain one, and two more doubles. Front post double, right here. And then shell space, do a shell, and then at the end here, we're going to do a double crochet into the top of this chain three space, so just do a double crochet in it, just like that. Okay, chain three, 
turn our work. This time we're going to do the same, except we're going to do back posts, double crochets. So when we do the back, it lines up with these. So shell stitch right here. And then we come to this post to do a back post double crochet. So yarn over. I turn my work. But you can do it however it's easiest for you and just do the back post double. Just like that. And then when we flip it back, it's in line with the rest of them. Right here. And do another shell. Over here, next space, back post double. Just go right underneath this post from the back of your work. That's what we're doing. My arm's getting stuck. A second here. Okay. Over here and do another shell into the next shell stitch. Right here, do a back post double. So yarn over and let's go. Right underneath it, the post, just like that. Go over to the next shell, and do another shell. Back post double. Another shell in this last shell stitch. And then one double in the top of this chain three space. To close that round. And we can turn it and look at it. I think it's looking good so far. And that's all. I'm just going to continue doing this for... I don't know how many rows I'm going to do yet. Um, so I'm just going to continue doing this. Doing the front post double, back post double, or uh, vice versa in each round. Right now I'm getting ready to do... I just did the row of back post, so now I'm going to turn it and do the row of front post. So, chain three, and start right here. And it doesn't matter if, I'm going to show you something. I just finished this row. It don't matter if I do a chain three and then turn and start my work, or if I turn my work and then do my chain three. Every person does it different. And then you can start either way. I mean, that goes with all projects that you do, or it says so, like chain two and turn, chain three and turn. And then some people just say turn and then chain two. It doesn't matter either way. It's whatever you're comfortable with. I always do my chain first and then turn. That way I can start on a fresh, fresh row there. But however you want to do it. So we're just continuing along right here. And doing a shell. And then working on right here the front post 
double crochets on this round. So let's go right underneath the post. Do your double. And that's how I'm going to do it from the, for the rest of the project. This row will be the front post and the next row will be the back post. And I'll let you know here in a little bit how many rows I do. Finished and I did 16 rows of the shells. And then I just kind of go through and get it all stretched out into the to a nice straight form. And this right here with the thick lines is going to be our front. So I'm going to flip it over. And I'm going to sew a little liner on. So I just got a piece of fabric here. And I cut it down to where it's about a half inch or so um, bigger than it all around. And then I'm going to use some pins. Got my magnet here. That's where I keep all my needles and stuff. And I'm going to get it all straightened up. And I'm going to take it and I'm going to fold my fabric and pin it. Fold it in. Pull out my edges here. Folding it so you have an I have a nice clean edge. Like that. And I'm gonna pin it all the way down, but I'm leaving a little bit on the edge. And as you can tell, because I still have to sew it together. So, I'm just going to do this all the way down. I'm trying to keep it as straight as possible. And then I'm going to turn it and I'm going to fold this end to Get it nice and straight, or as straight as you can, and leave a little bit of t like that. And then I'll pin this side. Keep poking myself. Just so like that. And just go ahead and finish pinning it all the way around. I got most of it pinned up here pretty straight how I want to do it. Now I'm just using a regular thread, a regular needle thread and some thread. And I just doubled it up. And I'm going to hand sew it on here because I don't have a sewing machine. I wish I did, but <laughs> I don't have to save up and get one. But until then, I'm just using hand sewing. And, oops. What I'm doing is, I'm just going and grabbing a piece of the yarn from underneath and just doing these little whip stitches, I guess, to hold the liner on. And when you grab a stitch, just grab the top part of it, like that, and then go through. That way you won't see the thread on the other side. You won't see it. You can't see no stitches on the other side. Just on the inside.
So I'm just grabbing the wherever I can find a little piece to grab. Just the top part of it. And this going right through. I wish I had a sewing machine. I really want one. I could I would do a lot more linings of my purses. I just hate hand lining. I'm not really the greatest at using a needle by hand. As you can tell, I'm sitting here <laughs> fumbling it up. Okay. Grab the top part of the stitch. And go right through. And I'll probably get tangled each and every stitch. Oh, I hate hand sewing. It's really not my favorite thing to do. Yeah. I'm definitely buying a sewing machine. I could have this sewed up in just a few minutes. And another thing I really don't like that well about hand sewing is the stitches that it leaves behind. They're not, I can't never get them real straight, so. But I try my best. So I'm going to go around and do mine up. Um, but I'm going to leave one side open. Because I think I'm going to try to make this stiffer. Let me see here. I might maybe put a piece of plastic canvas in it so it's stiffer, but maybe not. But I'm going to get it this side, this side, and this side sewed up. And then I'll fold it up and see if I think it needs something to make it stiff. But And also, like I said, I don't really like the looks of... I mean, they're okay, hand stitches, but they're not my favorite. So something I like to do in the end is I'll probably... I use um, hot glue to put the ribbon on to cover up all my stitches and to clean out my edges. But I'll show you how to do that when I get to it. Um, right now, just go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and finish mine. Sewing up my edges and then just leave one edge open. I'll let you know if we're going to put plastic in it. I'll show you real quick. Um, this part up here is going to be the top. And you want to line it even you want to leave these part open because so you can't see the lining on the other side I just lined it where the lining came up to each of these shells parts the curb if you can see what I'm talking about here so I'll just sew it like right along here and that way when I flip it over it'll just you won't be able to see it okay Okay, I sewed up around three sides, and I still got one side to sew. I decided I'm going to put a couple pieces of this plastic canvas in here. You don't have to do that, because it's going to go like this. And I'll hold it like that. But it's a little floppy, so I thought I'd just try to make it a little stiffer. So I just cut a couple pieces to size. And I'm going to put them like that, inside of the liner like that. So when they fold, the crease is going to be right here. And then it'll be like that. And then it's a lot stiffer. So, it's got a few pieces. Um, it's about three inches wide. Like that, just about like that. And then I'm going to tuck it in here before I sew up this last side. Take it right up here and here and to the all the way to the edge and fold it under it like that. And I want to do the same with this one, but I'm going to leave a little space in between them for, for, so I can fold it. So I want to sew just put a couple little stitches in these to hold them down. So I'm going to grab another needle here thread needle 
and a little bit of thread. Doubled it up again. A little knot at the end. So once I get, put my first one in how I want it, all the way down, push it all the way down as far as it'll go. Up against the liner. I'm just gonna come right up here in the corner and I'm just gonna go through my work like that and through a hole down here of the plastic. Like that and then back into the, another hole. Or actually I'm gonna go this way with it, just right back down, do my work. You're not gonna be able to see these stitches on the other side when you go back through, tuck it under. And then go back through another hole of the plastic. I'm not going to do this all the way down. I'm just going to do a few stitches here and here. Just so it doesn't move around on you. And if you want it to be real secure with it, you could probably go all the way down, but I think just a few stitches is going to be fine. Okay. And then I'll just put a couple of knots in my thread. And then I'm going to come and do the same to down here. That way it's not moving around on you. And remember, I'm going to cover up all these stitches because I just don't really like the looks of that. Of, of the way I hand so I'm just not very good at it. And then I'll do that down here a few stitches to make sure you go through the holes of the plastic and through your bag. And then you just put this one up a little bit. I'm leaving about look here. You can tell what I'm doing here. I'm lining it up between the fifth and the sixth shell. So you count down one, two, three, four, five, six. Right here in between the fifth and the sixth. And that's where I'm going to line it up. And I'm going to sew it right there. And there's probably maybe a half inch, if you can see it, space in between. You can tell by the my finger. That just gives it room so it can fold when we sew it together. Because we're going to sew it together and we want to, if you had that plastic one solid piece it wouldn't fold very good. So that's just to make it a little bit easier. So I'll sew a few stitches here and then a few stitches here and here through the plastic and a few stitches here and here through the plastic just to hold it down. And then I'm gonna finish. Then I'll finish sewing this up. Pieces of plastic sewed in here, and then I just went around the edges with this piece of ribbon. You don't have to do that. It's up to you. I just wanted to clean up my sewed ends. I just uh, used some hot glue, and if you use hot glue to cover up your stitches, just make sure you use a low heat hot glue gun because otherwise it'll be too hot for your fabric but if you use a low heat it works really good for fabric it holds it really nicely so now I'm just gonna I'm gonna sew up the 
sew, fold it in half and sew it with my yarn needle. So I'm going to get everything. Just make sure wherever you start sewing it on this side, it matches it's the same. Start in the same place you did, like count your shell stitches down. That way it's even. So I'm going to go, I'll tell you where I'm going to start at. So at the top of the fifth shell stitch. So here's one, two, three, four. Here's the fifth one. I'm gonna sew right about here. I'm just gonna use my yarn needle and try to hide my stitches the best that I can. a few stitches all the way down it. I'm going to do, instead of going making stitches that go over it, I'm doing stitches that just are side to side. Like, put it like that. And then I'll come back from this side and go through both sides. That way you can't really the stitches aren't going to be as noticeable as if you did like whip stitches around the top of it. So just go ahead and continue this all the way down to the bottom here and then match it up and do the same on this side. Start on the same shell stitch that we did on the other side. I sewed up. Now I'm just sewing a button on here. <clears throat> I'm going to use the hole of the middle shell as my buttonhole. So I'm using a regular needle and thread and I just lined it up to where I think it needs to be. And you can tell where the middle is. It's the third row from both sides. And since there's a lining and plastic in there, you kind of got to sew it like this from the outside. It's not the easiest, but you can get it. So just sew it on until you think that it's good enough and that it's not going to come off. Make a flower. And you don't have to do this if you don't want to, but I'm using the same size needle. I'm going to start with a chain. Let me look here. Let me see one thing. I'm going to do a chain of seven because I want to sew a flower on like right here and I want the circle 
when I close it, the button to come through the circle. So I'm going to make it big enough that my button will be able to go through it. Let me see. F7 will be big enough. Actually, I'm going to do a chain of eight. And if you want to test yours out on your own button, that's fine. But chain of eight. And I'm going to slip stitch to form a ring. Like that. Okay, then I'm going to chain one. Got hot glue on me. Chain one. I'm going to go back into the center of the ring. Do a single crochet. Then I'm going to chain two. Go back. Single crochet. Chain two. Single crochet. Chain two. I'm going to do this eight times until I have eight chain two spaces. Single crochet. Chain two. Single crochet. Chain two. Single. Chain two. Let me count my spaces. I got one, two, three, four, five. Might have to adjust them, but this is going to be the sixth one, seven. Okay, let me spread them out equally around my circle here. One, two, three. This will be the fourth one. Fifth one. Sixth one. Yeah. It's not working out for me very well. I can't get it to slide. There we go. Okay. Okay, this is my, this will be my eighth one, so I want to just go ahead and slip stitch it into that first chain one that we did. So now you should have eight of the chain, little chain two spaces. Now, you're going to chain one again, and you want to go over to this first chain two space and slip stitch into it. And then you want to do a single crochet, a double, and another double, and then a single. And that is going to be a petal. So then you jump over here to the next chain two space and you slip stitch into it to start. And then you do a single, two doubles, one, two, and then a single. Slip stitch into the next chain two space. And you do your single, two doubles and then a single slip stitch into the next chain two space and repeat single two doubles and then a single so let's go ahead and do that pattern all the way back around here to your beginning you should have eight petals. Okay. And then you want to slip stitch in that chain one space, or close to that chain one space that you did before. So right here. Okay. Now we want to do a chain of three. And then I'm going to just bring the chain over and slip stitch it right here. And that slip stitch that we did. And I'm going to chain three again. Two, three. Loosely chain three. 
and bring it over and slip stitch it right here. Chain three loosely. Look in between the petals and it will be that slip stitch that you did. And just slip stitch it in. Do this all the way around. Chain three. Right in between them. Chain three. Chain three. Okay, and then you kind of want to push these rings back behind the petals like that. Just pull your petals through. This is gonna they're gonna be for another set of petals like that. And then on this last one, slip stitch it into the first chain or first stitch of the first chain three right there. And push that one back. Chain one and then go ahead and slip stitch into that chain space. Now this time we're gonna do one single four doubles one two three four and then one single like that and then you slip stitch over into the next chain three space you did and do the same thing one single four doubles And then one single, like that. And then come over here to the next one, slip stitch into it, and continue that pattern all the way back to the beginning. Turn it back around, um, just slip stitch right over here, either in the first slip stitch or that chain one. And then leave a long string. Sew it on the bag like that with this. Okay, I'm gonna fluff up these petals a little bit. Okay, get my yarn needle. I'm gonna just kind of weave this in here to the back side. Okay, and I'm gonna sew it to where the center of this is on the center of this um, third loop, like. Like that. So I'm going to sew it on all around like that. So I'm going to hold it there. It's not going to be the easiest thing to do here. I'm going to weave my yarn down here to the to the ring. Okay, I got this ring hooked on here to this ring like, like that. And that's where I'll start.
just kind of wave, sewing it around the ring for now, just through this, the ring in the center of the flower, and then through the petal, like that, back through the ring, just to get it kind of tight on there. Now I'm up to where You see, I'm just going through the ring like this. It's, that's all I'm doing. And it's not even hitting the, the lining this way. Through the ring and back up through the bag. Okay, once you got it on there, I feel like it's tight enough. I don't think mine's gonna come off. I went wrapped around through the center ring enough to, it's not gonna come undone. Hide your tail. I should be able to pull my button through that center ring like that. And that's it. I hope you can follow my tutorial okay. And I'll try to get a sewing machine as soon as I can. That way I can show you that it's a lot easier to line bags with the sewing machine. But I mean it's not hard by hand. It just takes a little bit more time. But that's it. And like I said, I hope you can follow okay. Hope I wasn't too confusing. And don't forget to check out my other um, tutorials. I have a bunch of them on there with all different kinds of bags and purses and even a couple other little things that I did. Just usually whatever I crochet, I film it and put it on there so everybody can see what I do and learn it if they want to. And don't forget to check out my Facebook page too. I'll put a link below and you can post any of your crochet projects on there. I like to see them. And until next time, have a good day.